Hi, I'm Brent Hull. Welcome to Building with History. Today, we're going to be talking about the Georgian style, the style that my company, Hull Historical, is very familiar with. The reason this series is called Building with History is because as we look back to the past, there are secrets to the lost art of building that help us build better today. What is Georgian? What does that mean? Well, in 1740, King George was on the throne in England, and we were essentially an English colony at that time. So it's called the Georgian period. It lasts from 1740 into 1776. Why? The American Revolution. After that, we enter a period called the Federal Period. Now, where did the inspiration come from? Because we're an English colony, we're naturally looking back and remembering the houses that we saw in England. Well, in England, they were very enthralled by a guy named Andre Palladio. Palladio was an Italian stonemason in the late Renaissance who wrote a book called The Four Books of Architecture. He was basically studying classical elements and classical details, meaning Greek and Roman details, applied to a new style of home. Probably one of the greatest examples of a Georgian style architecture in early America is Drayton Hall. It's in South Carolina, and John Drayton used Palladian stylings to build his home. That's why there's columns on the front porch. That's why we have what's called graduated fenestration with the windows. Interestingly, just like John Drayton was inspired by Palladio, I was inspired by Drayton Hall. This home that we're gonna go look at, the way we use the bricks, the way we organize the moldings, all are an inspiration from the past. So let's go take a look. So here we are standing in front of this traditional Georgian house that was inspired from Drayton Hall. Drayton Hall was a classically styled home, meaning that it was very symmetrical, okay? Meaning that it was laid out very balanced. You'll see that inspiration in the porch detail, all picked up from this Georgian period. Also notice that the front porch, the windows on the first floor are bigger than the second floor windows. This is called graduated fenestration. There's this layering, there's this balance that takes place with these windows. That was all part of the way they designed back then. One of the other things that you'll notice about this house and great traditional houses, because they're symmetrically balanced and laid out, you have an order, okay? There's this calm, there's this balance that happens with their house. The scale, okay? The classical scale is built on a human scale. We are symmetrical, right? And my hands are proportionate to my head and my body. All the parts and pieces are proportionate. That scale translates throughout the house. There's these small details that end up making a big difference. For instance, in the brickwork, what we've done is this English bond where every fifth course, okay, one, two, three, four, five, is a header course. Kind of the magic of this is that when you stand back from the house, the bricks read a little bit different. When you stop and look at it and you go, oh, there's, there's a rhythm there, right? There's a pattern there. The same thing is true with this grapevine joint. There's these little lines inside the mortar joint, and you see that it kind of moves in curves where the arm of the mason actually would have moved through this thing. There is a human element to this that speaks to us. So we're standing in the entry hall, and in a traditional house, you have a very formal entry, which is pretty typical. You also have an access, okay? So we actually oriented the house this way so we could be looking down and seeing this beautiful view out the back. The moldings are really important. They organize the space. Our chair rail is at about 32 inches, and notice that it unifies the height of the windowsills, and it pulls the architectural elements together. Typically, Georgian stairs have this kind of scale and proportion. The balusters, in this case, are two and a quarter inches big, okay? A federal stair might have a baluster that's an inch and a quarter. This is a heavier pilaster. It is a Georgian pilaster. It's kind of bigger and thicker and bolder, which is part of that tradition. One of the key features would have been the dining room. The details in here are richer and nicer. We've got the wainscot in, in here as well, and notice how it too unifies the parts and pieces of the room. It is the windowsill, and then as it goes down farther into the china hutch, that same line. 
We also have what's called an overmantle, okay? An overmantle is basically pediment built up like this on top of your mantle. Georgian detail, that's not done as much in the federal period. Notice the top too, we have this arched pediment on either side over the china cabinets, and then we have a broken pediment there. It adds interest, it adds kind of variety. This is a very successful mantle, a successful composition that we've copied from past designs, where you have this cornice, a pulvinated frieze, an architrave. This element, okay, this detail right here is really important if you want to get this classical building system right. All very big and thick and bold that communicates those ideals that we're seeing at Drayton Hall. Hopefully now you understand kind of the joy of the Georgian style, the, the classicism, the symmetry, the balance, the human scale. The way the parts and pieces and even moldings are organized to make you feel and experience the house in a certain way. Thanks for watching Building with History. I'm Brent Hall.